welcome to the Missouri Times Election Roundtable. And this time we're going to be discussing what is what many people think is the top race in the state, the 22nd Senate District. Uh, Representative uh, Paul Whelan and Jeff Rorta in a rematch of 2010 for a House seat are squaring off for the state Senate uh, in what has become an expensive and uh, seemingly a more contentious fight. We're very honored this week to have uh, Brad Green, the executive director of the uh, Missouri Republican Senate Committee, Patrick Lynn, political strategist with the Democratic Party, Representative Kevin Engler, who is a former senator who represented parts of Jefferson County, and then the executive director of Progress Missouri, Sean Nicholson. So Sean, we'll start with you. Okay. Who's winning this race? I don't know, we'll find out in a, a couple days. I think it's gonna be a really competitive race because as you mentioned, we don't have a big statewide contest that's driving turnout. We don't have any big federal elections. So um, I think now is what we're gonna see over the next couple weeks is are these candidates able to turn out the voters they've been talking to and um, we'll see. Representative Engler, you're direct. Who's winning? Well, I think uh, the TV stations. <laughs> uh, they're making more money off this deal than ever before on a Senate race. But Jefferson County, I was born and raised there, is changing. When I was growing up there, it used to be a felony to be a Republican. Now it's just a misdemeanor, but it is changing. <laughs> it's always been conservative, and that's, that's typical of the whole state. It's been conservative, but it's voted Democratic. They, they are, for the most part, pro-life. Uh, pro-gun, against gay marriage, against higher taxes, but there's one issue, and that's labor, that has kept them in the Democratic ranks. And so this year it's going to figure out, are they going to stay Democrat? Are they going to change? I'll give you one example. My father, who was a union machinist for PPG forever, I saw, he's in the nursing home now, and I, I visit him a few times a week, and I saw him before the, the primary. I said, Dad, are you going to get to vote in the primary? And he said, yeah, I already voted. I said, he did? I said, that's great. He said, yeah, I voted for Elaine Gannon, who's a Republican. I said, Dad, <laughs> she's a Republican. You, you wouldn't, she wouldn't have been on your ballot. Because he said, I asked for a Republican ballot. This is my 83-year-old father that's never, I almost had the big one there. <laughs> never has he voted for a Republican or asked for a Republican ballot. He's changing. And so is Jefferson County. Is Jefferson County changing, Patrick Lynn? Uh, yes, it is. Um, and, but I would agree with Representative Engler. Um, that uh, Representative Rorta will win the Senate race because he's the only conservative Democratic Union member running. I think he fits. Checks the boxes, right? He does. I think he fits uh, the demographics of the area and their values, um, be they conservative on social issues, but then also still caring about working families. Brad Green, you are in charge of bringing home that win. Tell us why it's going to happen for Representative Wheeland. Well, I understand Patrick's point, but that's the same thing uh, the Democrats thought in 2012 with Joe Fowler, and uh, Romine took the southern half of Jefferson County, split it pretty much 50-50. So Jefferson County is definitely trending Republican right now. It, the Democrat Party there is no longer, um, you know, their parents' Democrat Party, and it's, it's becoming more and more Republican. Patrick Lynn, no one discussed the issue that everyone, that one side is discussing constantly in Jefferson County, and that's the... Uh, popularity, or in this case, probably unpopularity, of President Obama. What is his role here, and, and can Florida overcome Obama? Yeah, I actually think the unpopularity of President Obama, actually, it, it does hurt Florida. It hurts more with Democrats, because I don't believe Democratic voters are excited to come out. Um, I think there's a lot of unhappiness with the president. We have a lot of uh, dissatisfaction with the governor. I think a lot of that weighs that, that will, at the end of the day, will hurt Democratic turnout. But I, I think it's going to be a close race, but I think... Uh, Representative Rorta comes out on top because of his service in the community as a police officer, a legislator. Um, you know, he's worked hard on public safety issues, and I think that's what kind of pulls him through at the end. When I think of an excited Democrat, I think of Sean Nicholson. What, what, how does President Obama affect this race, and what are some things they can do to, to uh, sidestep it? So I think uh, the Representative Weiland has certainly been trying to make this all about the president because mm -hmm. there's not a lot that he wants to talk about in terms of successes or things that he'd like to take from the House over to the Senate. But I think Representative Rorta has done a lot to differentiate himself from uh, progressives and Democrats like me, frankly, um, on whether that's reproductive rights or whether that's gun safety um, or a number of other, other issues. So I think Representative Rorta can legitimately say that he is uh, a conservative Democrat and Jefferson County has a long tradition of, of elected moderates. Brad Green. Are you going to let uh, Jeff Rorta separate himself from Barack Obama? Uh, no, because I don't think he can. Um, you know, a lot of his policies, Jeff Rorta has kind of voted, has aligned himself with, with some of the votes that he's had in the House. And I don't think that there's any way to escape your voting record. And that's something that we 
have exposed and continue to plan to expose. Representative Engler, in your time in office, you've ran with popular Republican presidents, an unpopular Republican president, now Barack Obama. How would you handle this if you were uh, Representative Wheeland? What would be your strategy to win this race in this climate? Well, I think you have to convince the voters in Jefferson County that you're like them. And uh, Barack Obama has been our best recruiter in Jefferson County. We, we'd like to hire him. Uh, he's, that and the governor uh, has really helped here lately uh, with his missteps. So, I, I, you know, I serve with, with Jeff. He's a great guy. He really is in, in the House. But you can't speak on the floor of the House how you're for Obamacare. And they say, well, I really don't have anything to do with the president. <laughs> well, where were you when you said you were for Obamacare? It's very difficult. And being a minority member of the minority is more difficult. Uh, if you're a man, uh, man or woman from Jefferson County, say, I'm going to send this person to Jefferson City to represent my conservative values. He's going to do that as a minority member of the minority. He's going to do that with some of the most liberal people that I've ever served with. What's he going to do? Stand up in that caucus and say, I think we should do a bill for gun owners' rights. They'll throw him out of that caucus. What, he's going to stand up and say, I'm for, for protecting the unborn. No, they're, they're going to laugh at that. Yeah, and the, you know, the, the, all the, the inner city liberals that are in that caucus, he will be an outsider in an insider's game, and that's, that's not good. Speaking of being an outsider in an insider's game, um, union households, uh, that's a big issue. Big. Republicans seem to be coming around to courting union votes uh, more directly, but uh, how does Representative Whelan shake his party, who is uh, very much against uh, workers' rights? That, that's, that's a tough Tough thing. Uh, you know, there's some of us that are, are uh, have been pro-union, and in that county, the, the representatives have taken those stances, so it's it's a little bit easier. And when you have the basis of the Republican Party, when when my opponent in the Senate said that he was going to make right to work a, a priority, I had so many people contact me from Jefferson County in the Republican ranks saying, "We're union and we're Republican. What are you doing?" So a lot of the unionized members now are Republican in Jefferson County, and the question is, will they be able to pull them over, or will we be able to convince them like they're doing the House races, having unions call and say, your, your opponent's going to vote for right to work, so you've got to stick with him. And the scare tactics, I don't know how, how much will work, because I've served with, with Whelan, both when I was in the Senate and the House, and he has not voted uh, against the unions. So it's going to be tough to convince people that he, he's going to suddenly shift when he goes to the Senate. Patrick Lynn, how does uh, Representative Whelan shake his party leadership, the people he's voted for to put in House leadership who are very much anti-labor? Well, I think his best strategy, that, and we see it here today, is not to show up for a debate because uh, he, uh, him speaking in public, I think, is his worst um, asset. So I think um, that is a good strategy. How does he shake? You know, I, I, so looking at his way, he has uh, separated himself a little bit. As you see, he's pro-labor votes. Um, if he was running for his House seat again as an incumbent, labor probably would have endorsed him for his House seat against anyone else, so they would have kept him there. I think the only, you know, the reason why the endorsement is with Rorda is because he's a union member and he's, the, you know, the Democrat too, so they're gonna, you know, fall, you know, fall back to him. Um, and I think that, but then you see his votes where, you know, he's trying to, you know, with a lawsuit to keep his own daughters from being able to get birth control, I think he fits right in with his um, sort of ex extent, as the Post-Dispatch said, wacko Republican leadership. Sean Nicholson, are you going to allow Representative Whelan to outrun his vote for Tim Jones for Speaker, for John, the overhouse leader, and so on and so forth? Are you going to allow him to outrun his House caucus that is probably not in line with Jefferson County? Yeah, as mentioned, his very first vote in the House would have been for the Speaker Tim Jones, who sued the President for being a Kenyan. Um, his most recent and only notable accomplishment, Representative Whelan, in the last year is suing the federal government so that his adult daughters can't get birth control. So I think he is not a mainstream candidate, um, and I think that ultimately that will be his downfall. Brad, if Paul Whelan wins, will he win because he has convinced pro-labor union households that he can represent their interests? I believe that's going to be a big part of it, but honestly, like I said before, Jefferson County is trending Republican, and I think that a lot of the messaging that we have out there is appealing to not only union households, but people outside of that, and I think that's what we're really going to stick with, and you're going to see a lot of the unions break late, but um, you know, a lot of them might break towards Florida. I have a belief that they definitely will, but I think that we're going to pull quite a few of those voters to our side. What is the reason why Jefferson County seems to be voting higher Republican percentages? You know, uh, that's an anomaly that I've been trying to figure out for the past two years. Um, 
still haven't come up with an answer, so when I do find one, I'll let you know, but I honestly just think a lot of people are realizing that the Democrat Party is no longer what it used to be. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to take a shot at that. Um, I had talked Representative Elaine Gannon into running, and her father-in-law, as you know, was a Democratic senator for 16, 20 years, and the paper said, why would you run as a Republican? And she said, in all consciousness, I cannot run for a party that believes in these you know, gun control, uh, uh, partial birth abortion, gay marriage. I, I don't believe in those things, and I could not run as a Democrat because they've changed. I think the majority of Jefferson County is starting to realize they have changed, and those aren't the views that, that we've held and Democratic principles for, for years in the Democratic Party, and, and that's okay. There's people that disagree with that, but I think they're finally recognized that's not our position. I'm going to ask about a very famous Jefferson Countyan who was, when Jefferson County was a very blue county, uh, Governor Nixon, Sean Nicholson. When Jefferson County was blue, they sent Jay Nixon to represent them in the state Senate. Now he's their governor. What role will he play in this race? So we've already seen Representative Rorta bring the governor in because he's an asset and will help excite the Democratic voters. Um, he's had a track record in Jefferson County. He just won there big a couple years ago. So I think uh, the governor is going to be an asset and as much angst and frustration as there may be among the political class with the governor, uh, I'm not sure that translates to the regular voters who are going to be ultimately deciding this race. Brad Green, are you seeing polling in this shows Jay Nixon popular in this district? He is still popular, but his unfavorables are growing. Um, specifically after the whole Ferguson situation when we really, we really saw his unfavorables shoot up, um, and that was the only thing that we could attribute it to. Now, that's still not saying that he's grown totally unpopular down there because Jefferson County is always going to love their hometown boy, but um, we are seeing some things trend towards uh, his unfavorable side. Speaking of Ferguson, I think that's an interesting part of this discussion. Uh, Jeff Rorta is the uh, business manager spokesman for a police union in St. Louis, St. Louis City. Um, he was on a, on a fundraising thing that was raising money to, to help for a legal defense with Officer Wilson, the, the officer that shot Mike, Mike Brown in, in Ferguson that sparked the uh, unrest. In Jefferson County, it seems as though that's actually turning into a benefit to Jeff. He's become more outspoken on those issues. Representative Engler, how do you play that? What do you make of that? Well, he's got a problem here. You're talking about the governor. I knocked on doors in Jefferson County the other day. The governor's going over like a pregnant pole vaulter down there. I mean, he, he is falling flat. They think his, him wanting to convict this officer before the evidence came in was that we're going to vigorously prosecute him. You haven't even heard the evidence. And I don't care if it's racial makeup or the unfairness of it or whatever, but people perceive that as totally being unfair, and that's really hurt the governor's uh, rating. But it has hurt, I mean, it's hel helped Rorta with his position that he's defending. Uh, I think that's played well for him down there. Patrick Lynn, have you ever seen anything like it? A Democrat running for office in a conservative county who's the spokesman for the police union and possibly is helping him run for office. Uh, yeah, it's the best thing that happened to Representative Rorta in the Senate race, I think, yeah. with uh, his position with uh, the Police Officers Association and Ferguson, what happened there in the defense of the police officer on his part is the best thing that ever happened. I mean, I think with Governor Nixon, I think, like Brad was saying, he's a little more popular in Jefferson County. If I was Representative Shoup, I wouldn't have him into St. Louis County for a Senate fundraiser, but I think he does still help in Jeff County. Brad, what do you make of this? How do you get to the right of him on this issue? And I guess in Jefferson County, there is no left political ground there. What do you do? You know, I think we just stick with our messaging that we have. Um, I, I don't think that the, uh, the police officer messaging is sticking really well for Rorta, as we've seen. And as long as we stay on track with our, um, with our messaging, with our growing the economy down there and promoting some jobs, um, and sticking with the anti-Common um, Core, um, and Obama liberal policies, uh, I think that gets us where we need to be. Sean, at what point does he hear from you on Twitter? Uh, at what, what point does Representative Rorta get a little too far to the right on this issue and start hearing from progressives? So there is a lot of frustration and angst uh, that won't be surprised to anyone here from the left and from voters in St. Louis City and St. Louis County on what's happening in Ferguson. But Representative Rorta is not running in the Democratic primary and he's not running in St. Louis County. Um, we have been pretty vocal in criticizing Jeff in the past on some of his votes and stances on this, um, and we'll continue to do so when he's in the Senate. Um, but that doesn't mean when we've got a binary choice, you've got Paul and you've got Jeff, um, one's going to be wrong, 
100% of the time, and one of them is going to be wrong 20% of the time. And so that's where I come down on uh, the choice between the two. So you think that the progressives will give him some, some room there to try to get elected? Um, yeah, I, I think Jeff will end up winning, and people are going to come home to, to – they've only got two choices on the ballot. I get, yeah, so they're going to have to pick one of the two. Being a progressive, a liberal, or a Democrat does not mean you don't believe in fair trials and law and order. And I, and I don't think anything that Representative Borda is doing sets him outside of uh, the beliefs of the Democratic Party. And there's so many progressives there. I mean, you could hold a convention <laughs> yeah, exactly. a phone booth. Well, let's get real. We're, right. we're talking to people that go to work, that believe in these conservative values. Okay. What they think that the – or if the post is grace, it would endorse him. That would even be better here. Come out strong for, you know, after you've just crucified this cop in the post, the front page of the post dispatch, go ahead and come out strong for Rorda. <laughs> that, what, what a bipolar situation that is. Let's go ahead and, and endorse the guy that's defending the white officer while at the same time you uh, just go ahead and prosecute him on the front page of the post. So that, that's an interesting dynamic there in itself. But I, I, would, I would take it a little different. Being a minority member, when I was the majority leader of the Senate, and the same thing was when the Democrats were charged, a minority member would come to me and say, you know, could I, can I get this bill up? Could I possibly pass this bill this year? And, and I'd say, well, if we can get to it, we're going to. You know, how many bills, Brad was my chief of staff uh, for a year, how many bills did we have going in a majority member? You had 18 bills that year? 18 bills. Do you, bill, think, I mean, so so you I mean, think voters really understand and, no, and care about those I, type I, of things? I, you know, you can say, I want to be effective, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this for the economy, I'm going to do this for jobs. If you can't get a bill passed, how are you going to do that? And several of those bills were, were local government bills. I mean, Farm the city of Farmington would come to us and need several things, and we got every single one of those things done. I don't know that uh, you know the mayor of Imperial can go to Jeff Ward and say, hey, I need um, And when you're going to be a minority for, member of It's going to be hard to do. Or you can't even get your caucus to back your position. That's going to be more difficult. But well, isn't the Senate different from the House, though? I mean, bit, yeah. I, mean, it is a little, I mean, every senator is almost a caucus unto themselves, they say. That it seems to be that uh, even minority members in the Senate have, are able to have a little more legislative success. They play defense better in yeah, the Senate uh, because they have the ability to defend. Right. But if you look at uh, my tenure in, in the uh, Senate, I bet you we passed maybe ten times the legislation that any minority member passed. Mm -hmm. So now, they might have killed more than I did, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I don't know if that's something you want to tell your grandkids. Oh, you should have seen all the stuff I killed. <laughs> when I was in the le legislature, I killed things all every day. I killed things. It was great. We nothing got done because I killed it all. Can you win on killing things? Is that something that would win an election? It's, it's tough to promote negative. It's tough to promote saying, I will kill this and I will kill that. So, like, Can they killing vote? Obamacare and killing a, Common Core and killing Common Core. Unless it's an Obama, yeah, it's an Obama pair, then, right. then, then, then that's, uh, that's very popular. Can Paul Whelan get to the, uh, to the left of Rorda on saying, I will be part of the Republican caucus that kills right to work? You know, it's interesting because I served with both of them. And I served with uh, Rorda the first time he was in, too. And because um, he keeps talking about nobody was here. Well, I was here. Um, <laughs> They're a lot alike, and it's interesting this political time of year uh, when you talk about issues. They've got some little different issues, but it's not like the same state race, uh, Senate race we're seeing in St. Louis where you've got people that are diametrically opposed running. Now you're looking at nuances and who's going to be the most effective, and that's where I'm saying I think I would promote the fact that I would be able to get something done because of that position. But well, Looking I, at the state outlook, uh, the House races, a lot of those are going to come down to Jefferson County. Will, will the race in Jefferson County, will this race affect those House races, Sean? Absolutely. I, I think those are going to be very narrowly contested races. Um, you've got a number of open seats, and then you've got some contested, uh, you've got some challenges to incumbent Democrats, to incumbent Republicans that we've talked about already. So those are going to be super tight. And then whether or not those House candidates are able to motivate their voters is going to impact the Senate race going back the other direction. Where in the, in the state, what do the Democratic Party caucus need to do to actually begin to grow and stop gradually losing? What do they need to turn that around? Um, well, I think this year is part of the solution and it's, it's a really tight environment. There's going to be a lot of open seats in 2016, a lot in 2018, and so recruiting great candidates, um, standing up for what's right in Jefferson City and uh, being a part of a solution rather than uh, more of what's going on right now in Jeff City. Badger, is 2014 part of the solution? It seems as though it's, if anything, a good night would be holding serve. Um, I would agree. It, it is part of it. You know, we need the Democrats need to sit, stay where they are, maybe pick up uh, a couple of House seats there if they're able to. 
Um, the biggest problem is, and the biggest issue is money, money, money. Democrats need more money. Um, when you see the money that's been able to drop into, you know, when a few hundred thousand dollars can be dropped in by the, the Senate Republicans and the, and the Missouri Democratic Party can drop in 50, I mean, that, that's a big problem. Um, I think 2016 is, is a little better for Democrats, but really I think if you look at the numbers for the House and the Senate, it's really 2018. It really is a building to 2018. It's that far off before I think they're going to have a real opportunity to pick up seats. But it's money and then it's uh, strong leadership that cares about pick winning legislative races and um, um, having a smart strategy. I think at times we, the Democrats, we try to Give a, give a little bit to every race all over the state. I don't think we target very well, and we don't focus on where the future of the Democratic Party would be, which I would say places like, you know, St. Louis County still, obviously, but St. Charles County, Greene County are places where we should focus that I don't think we focus Fred, on. Fred, you're so. running a Senate strategy right now that is able to target seats that are marginal, if not seats the Democrats would have to win to get back, uh, to get back near a majority. Uh, that targeting strategy, where, where do you see 2016? Where, where will you, do you already look that far, or are you just, you're just getting through the day today? I can't see you past November 4th right now, so. <laughs> I mean, is it a different thing where you get to focus all your big guns on seats that, frankly, if you're gonna look at an 1817 Senate, Democrats would have to have? Absolutely, um, you know, the, those are things, we try to focus our resources where we think they need to be. Um, you know, we are in constant contact with all of our candidates, and, um, we know where those resources need to be shifted to. Um, and fortunately, we have the ability to put those resources where we need to. Um, we have gracious donors that believe in a lot of the things that we're um, trying to pass through the legislature. And um, you know, the money that we give to our candidates, it speaks for itself. It speaks to the confidence and uh, generosity of the individual senators that are giving, as well as the individual donors, the business community all across Missouri, um, and their belief in you know, our values and the legislation and pro-business uh, agenda that we have. Kevin, you ran the strategy in 2010 that took a big gain from a, from a majority to a commanding majority. What, what, were, what were you thinking when you, started the, when you started out at the beginning of the cycle? What were your thoughts? Uh, my thought was if we recruit qualified people that can win, in, uh, I won in a 42 percent Republican district, and if you can win in those and get those kind of people, then we can build the, the funds behind them. We talked about a couple things here. I just saw the polling on a lot of the numbers. There's only like 10 races of the 163 races that are competitive. Mm -hmm. And five of them are in Jefferson County. So the, I think the Senate race will make a big difference. And I think there'll be a couple of them that will be under 2,000 votes. So it's, it's going to be who can get their people out that last day. But you were talking about funding, and funding's important. But when you have twice as many representatives, that helps you. The other thing is, we treat this as a team sport. And that's one of the things I convinced the, the Senate of and trying to convince the House. It doesn't do any good to serve in the minority because you're not as effective. So go ahead and help some of these people. We're knocking on doors. Uh, there, there were three reps. I was out, out with three other reps knocking on the doors that doesn't matter to us in any political way other than the fact that might be able to help that person win on this past weekend. And funding, you know, I give money to the other candidates to try to help them. I bet I've given more money to Democrat people, uh, Democrat House members than half the Democrats uh, because uh, in this cycle, because they don't tend to share the wealth, they've got to protect it for themselves. I've Our been people told that you've given more money to Democrats than Jay Nixon. That's possible. Patrick Lynn, is it true that a good candidate and then the money comes, you, you recruit the candidate, then you get the money, or do you get the money and then you can recruit the candidate? Chicken or the egg? Well, I think it is both. I think one of the problems we see with uh, the Democrat recruitment is the lack of. I mean, there's so many uh, Republican House members who have no opponents. There's a lot of seats there, and I think that is a, is a big problem with the Democrats. Um, recruitment can always be better. But also with that recruitment, you have to be able to say, hey, we, if you're going to get a good candidate, they want to know the resources are going to be there to help them. And too often, um, we just don't have the resources. I think this year it's been um, exciting to see um, Attorney General Coster and Senator McCaskill step up and start um, putting money into the races a, a little bit more that it, it goes a long ways to helping. Right. Predictions. Does a um, Blunt, Schmidt, Tilly Republican win Jefferson County or does a Coster, McKenna Democrat win Jefferson County? I think uh, Roar is going to pull this out. It's going to be close. What's the mark? Um, I'll say two points. Two points. To the Democrats, pick up any House seats. Um, one or two would be awesome. To pick one or up. two would be, and you think that's what will happen? Um, I think holding serve is what's going to happen. Holding serve. Patrick Lynn, who wins the Jefferson County race? Um, I think Representative Rorta does by one or two points. It could be, I mean, I think it's going to be very close. It could even maybe be under one point. I think it could be a very close race. Um, 
Um, I think just I think our biggest I, I think he represents the values and the people of Jefferson County very well. Um, it's just getting the uh, base and the independent vote to come out. What happens in the House? Um, I think they stand firm. Stand firm. Yeah. Brad Green. I'm what's saying, the, what's uh, the spread? I'm saying Wheeling by six, and I think we pick six. up two of the House seats. Bold Wheeling by six. Representative, what do you think? I think Wheeling's going to win, but it's going to be close, and I think that uh, we pick up four to five seats around the state. Talk about bold. Wow. Which is very bold. I'm just I'm looking at the trend lines. In the last six weeks since we polled the first time, six percent more of the people have said that they they are more prone to vote Republican than Democrat than, than six break. weeks Last ago. Last question, is that a good thing for the state? I think there has to be balance in the state. I, I, I think that there is a purpose to have checks and balances in the system, uh, but you're going to, we're getting more, more polarized, and I, I do think that uh, we have to be more responsible in the House if we have a bigger majority. It's easier to pass things when you have a sure. big majority, so it's easier to pass bad legislation too. So there has to, we're coming up with a, a different committee structure so that we're going to vet the bills uh, more thoroughly. And, uh, and we, we look have forward to, do a to uh, seeing it in, in January. Um, thank you very much for joining us here at the Missouri Times at this uh, Senate SD22 Outlook. Uh, check back tomorrow where we'll be airing our full uh, SD24 debate between uh, Representative Jill Shoup and Jay Ashcroft. Thanks for joining us.